On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. It appears that Dave's frozen, so um, let me continue. <laughs> Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene. Visitors from Jerusalem, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you. Fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will call wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smokes, uh, clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and you killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always before me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope, for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. 
He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honour in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. But David himself never ascended into heaven, yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honour at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord your God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourself from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptised and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And now we're handing over to Graham, who is not going to speak for a long time. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Phil. The te technology is great, isn't it, when it works? So ju I just want to say a quick word about the technology. Uh, while we've been on this lockdown and we've been talking over Zoom, two things I've been told about myself I've never heard before in my life. One is that I'm fuzzy around the edges and the other one is that I need to speak up. So if anything happens and I get fuzzy around the edges or you can't hear me, somebody give me a shout. Um, I, I don't want to make any apologies for the amount of scripture we've just heard. It's all very, very rele relevant. But I do have an apology to make. Um, anyone who was around in 2017 may remember that far back, may recall that I then gave a talk on uh, Pentecost that year as well. Um, I did actually, when I was preparing for today, I did actually go and have a look back through my notes. And I did think, I can't really just say what I said before. I can't just repeat myself, you know, and as, as I say that, I can actually hear some of the guys from the Saturday morning breakfast meeting saying, why break a habit of a lifetime? <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm very aware that there may be somebody watching this, uh, this, this morning or during the week that maybe don't know that much about uh, Pentecost. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of background. If anybody was listening last week, uh, Steve Thomas was speaking and he, he mentioned that Pentecost Sunday is, is the day or oh, sorry the day of Pentecost is 10 days after the day of ascension it's actually 50 days after Jesus resurrection so after Easter Sunday um, it took place in Jerusalem and it, it there was a festival going on at the time called the festival of weeks so that's really the background 10 days before the day of Pentecost, Jesus said to his disciples, go back to the city and wait. Go back to the city and wait till my father sends the gift which I have spoken to you about. Do not leave the city, he said. He then went on to say, John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It then says that the disciples went off back to the city full of joy and praise. And why wouldn't you be if Jesus had just promised you a gift from his father? Um, it might be worth mentioning at this point that it wasn't just the disciples. There was about 120 people by this time 
there was people who had started following Jesus since his resurrection. And Jesus' mother was there and his brothers were there. They went back to the city and, um, as it says, filled with joy and praise. Apart from that, um, that going back full of praise and joy and going to the temple, there's not actually a lot of detail about what they did during the next 10 days. The, we do read later on in Acts that they did go through a process of uh, getting a replacement for, uh, for Judas. Sorry, probably not the right way to put it. Not a replacement for Judas, but uh, someone to bring their number back up to 12. But apart from that, um, there wasn't really a great deal. And we know that they were full of joy when they went back. But I wonder during that 10 days, what other emotions they went through. You know, um, Jesus did say, in a few days, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, what a few days was to them, we don't know. I mean, certainly these days, if we order something from Amazon, and it's going to be more than a few days, then we wouldn't buy it. We'd get it from somewhere else. So I wonder what other emotions they went through doing, especially the new followers of Jesus. I wonder if they were maybe thinking, well, they were probably all thinking, what's going to happen? What's going on? We've got, we have the, ad, the, the advantage of reading the story. But I wonder what they were thinking during that 10 days, especially the new people who joined um maybe they were thinking that whatever it is that's going to happen is not going to be for us anyway we've only been following jesus for a few days it's only going to be for the inner circle well we've already heard in the, heard in that scripture that he wants to pour out his spirit on all people but they didn't know that i wonder if some of them were maybe thinking has jesus forgotten us he did say a few days, and now we're in day eight and day nine. Maybe there's a bit of fear, a bit of doubt creeping in. You know, I know that probably over the years, I've probably gone through some of those emotions myself. So had God forgotten them? Had Jesus let them down? Was it just for the inner circle? No, this was God's good and perfect timing for his good and perfect plan, which was about to come to fruition and bang, the Holy Spirit arrived and everything changed. Their fear was replaced by freedom. Their doubt was replaced by confidence, courage and boldness. It says Peter stood up and spoke boldly. The disciples were speaking in different languages as the Spirit enabled them. Everybody, everybody had a part to play. And we all have a part to play. We all have a part to play. They spoke boldly and confidently. And they were receptive and, and obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Everything changed. 3,000 pilgrims confessed, were baptized, and joined the kingdom of God. The world didn't know that God's spirit was going to come and live with his people. The world didn't know. You know, I remember back in 2017, there was a series of talks going on in the build-up to Pentecost about the encounters that the disciples had with Jesus after his resurrection. And somebody who, I think it might have been Moretta, started a trend. Um, she named her talk after an old pop song. Now, I couldn't remember most of them because I was not old enough. But she was speaking about the road to... Um, the road to Emmaus. And she called her talk, Walking Back to Happiness. I thought it was brilliant. So anyway, this went on for about five weeks and then I was speaking on Pentecost and I thought, I, I wanna keep the trend going, but what song could I, could I name my talk after? And I came up with 
the song Just Another Manic Monday. You all remember it? Just another manic. Oh, all right, all right. Forget. Um, and I was thinking about those pilgrims who got up that morning. They were thinking, it's just another day at the festival. Just another day at the temple. And then bang, the Holy Spirit turned up and everything changed. Because the disciples were receptive and obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, they spoke out boldly the word of God and 3,000 pilgrims had their lives changed forever. Tomorrow morning, on Monday morning, there's going to be people getting up thinking, it's just another manic Monday. Just another manic Monday, maybe going to the office if they're allowed to. Queuing at the supermarket, doing homeschooling. There'll be people alone feeling anxious and uncertain about their health, their jobs, their finances. But if we are receptive and obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and we speak out the words that the Holy Spirit gives us and enables us to say, and I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works when we're in lockdown and we're not seeing the people we normally see. But I, I do remember it saying that when Peter stood up and spoke boldly, 3,000 people heard what he was saying. They didn't have any PA. They didn't have any microphones. They didn't have any speakers. It was not natural that 3,000 people could hear what he was saying. It was supernatural. And I believe that if we are obedient and receptive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, God will do something supernatural with us when we speak out those words. And that might be for our young, you know, it says, it says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, your sons and daughters. And it really struck my heart about our young people, how they've been kept apart from their friends. Um, and maybe with this restriction being lifted, they may actually this week be going out to meet some of their friends, keeping their distance. But I just really want to pray. I know that the Holy Spirit wants to anoint our young people. He wants to fill them afresh with his spirit and give them that boldness and that courage so that they can change the lives of their friends forever. Everyone's got a part to play. Everyone's got a part to play. It says that young men will have visions, old men will have dreams. Everyone's got a part to play. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. Everyone's got a part to play. We've all, you know, when I, when I, when I look through my notes in 2017, I, um, I realized that actually Pentecost is just as, just as available to us today as what it was in 2017. It's just as important today. In fact, it's just as important today as what it was when it first happened on that day. And that gift that Jesus promised that his disciples is available to us as well if we're receptive and we're obedient to the prompting of the Spirit. I just get a feeling that, you know, if you're sitting at home now, you've got young people, with, just wanting you to just pray for them now. I don't care if you're not listening to me. Just pray for them now that they will receive the Holy Spirit. And I know that um, I've got Ben and Mel Reed on my screen here. And I know that Sam and Archie will be in another room. They'll, they'll be listening. They'll be at their own churches. I just ask you, I just encourage you now, parents, just to pray. The Holy Spirit will come upon them now. And they will go out tomorrow and change lives. You know, old men and young men, I just pray, and if you're living on your own, I just pray for you now that the Holy Spirit would come and he would anoint you afresh, give you that boldness and change your fear to freedom. You know, 
we're going to be singing a song shortly, which I chose, which is, you'll, you'll all be familiar with it, will you? And, and the, the, the chorus is, flood this place and change, it says, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Flood this place and change the atmosphere. Are you ready to have your place flooded with the Holy Spirit? Are you ready for your atmosphere to be changed? It goes on in that song to say, let us be more aware of your presence. Lord, I pray, help us to be more aware of your presence. Lord, would you come by the power of your spirit now? Lord, would you come by the power of your spirit? You know, to receive the Holy Spirit is to grow in grace and the gifts of the spirit. To receive the Holy Spirit is to recapture Pentecost. We can recapture Pentecost today and tomorrow and the day after and the day after. That gift that Jesus promised is available to us all each and every day. But we all have a part to play. It's not just for the select few. It's not just for the elders. It's not just for the leadership group. It's for everyone. We all have a part to play. And Lord, I pray a blessing on everyone who hears this this morning. Lord, would you would you sow some seeds? Would you open up their hearts, Lord? Would you show them that freedom that they can have, that boldness that they need? Amen.